Now, with LeBron James entering his 20th season in the NBA, and the Lakers, some of their perimeter players are struggling with catch-and-shoot threes like Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell from time to time, and just the overall continuity on the court, especially with defensive rebounding. The Lakers just don't look like they need to be where they're supposed to be going, which is towards a championship. A lot of people are asking themselves, when is AD actually going to take over this team? Because initially, he joined the Lakers when LeBron James was 35, and at some point, the plan was for Anthony Davis to take over for LeBron, especially as he entered his own prime years. And with the inconsistency of Anthony Davis just being available, it leaves us scratching our heads as what was the Lakers front office thinking during this summer, just even considering that they're about to enter the next season with a 39-year-old as their star player. Now, Gilbert Arenas and Raja Bell spoke on this, and they gave a player's perspective. You guys check it out, and every once in a while, I'll check in. I'm I'm on AD a lot, um, and I am. And it's and listen. I'm look. I'm not saying that he's not a phenomenal player, but like I, I guess I would be asking you, what do you think they need to do? Is it a move? Is it simply do you believe in AD to be the 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 one that can carry that? You know, in a way that will allow them to win a championship. If LeBron isn't able to, let's say he's playing 60 games or 65 games. And it's not an every night thing in the playoffs where you're going to get that performance. Is is AD capable? Um, do we need another piece there? Like, what is what is Gil think? Yes, I, I think um, as a Laker fan, I think um, that the Lakers organization is delusional. And the delusion, <laughs> <laughs> the delusion is the delusion of what you're watching, right? To to. We know how he's playing, right? But to go into the free agent as LeBron's the number one option was the mistake that you're making, right? You should say, all right, mentally, LeBron is 38, right? He's going to be, he's 38, 39. We need someone to come in as our first or second option, right? We need our Jason Tatum. We need our Kara I mean, um, Kyrie. And I'm wondering if the Lakers are not saying nothing about Anthony Davis's performances due to the business ties with LeBron James's Clutch Sports. Let's remember, Anthony Davis is, I believe, the second biggest client for Clutch Sports, and especially with that large extension he just re-signed for. So there are business ties with Anthony Davis, and I believe the Lakers don't want to ruffle any feathers with LeBron James and Rich Paul's Clutch Sports. That, that should have been a big move for them, knowing that... We do have LeBron James, but if you take him out of the equation, how good is the team? Because in a sense, if you're relying on a 38, 39 year old, you are delusional. I don't, I don't care what he's looking like. He's 38, 39. If we're relying on 39 years old, then something is wrong with us as an organization. We should have made all the right moves to get someone in here who can carry the team, knowing that, ah, we got LeBron. <laughs> we do have LeBron. And I think we went into it saying, we have LeBron. We don't need anybody else. Like, ah. And then you also combine that with them just signing guys like Hachimura and Tyrrhenian Prince. A lot of role players they're signing. And it's almost like they're treating them as if they were like starters or just guys that contribute consistently. Guys like Christian Wood, whose motor is always being questioned. Those type of signings, when you see the Lakers surround LeBron, well, I should say older LeBron and AD with these type of guys. You wonder, if is this really building a championship squad? Because you used to be able to get away with this with LeBron, as we've seen in Cleveland, where they surround him with a bunch of older players and just a bunch of questionable role players. And he still led them to the finals. But now LeBron being at his age, surrounding him with these type of role players, especially AD just still playing second fiddle, this ain't really going to work. I think why we get on AD is we know he's where Joel Embiid and Jokic and, and, and Greek the Freak is. We know that's the level you're on. That's the level he's on, but unfortunately for AD, it's just the way he plays is so clunky, the way he lands and just, I don't know if he thinks he's a guard, but the way he plays is just not going to lead him to be healthy consistently. He's got to play more like a big and have the understanding like, okay, you don't need to jump for certain balls or you just don't need to act like your perimeter player you don't have that type of flexibility the difference is they are playing every goddamn game they're they're there for their team like 
You speaking Roger's language right now? Bro, you know? I don't even know. <laughs> like right now, what's stopping you from averaging 32, 31, and 12? Him? There's no one in the NBA besides yourself. Yeah, him. Just, he's the one stopping it. Yes. <laughs> over there, man. Come on. <laughs> and I wish Raja actually elaborated more because it's not just his play. I'm telling you, it's just his style of play. He plays as if he's a perimeter player. He needs to understand he's a big, that he can get hurt. AD plays way too awkward for a big man. He has to understand and try to conserve his energy or just conserve his legs for certain plays. It's just the way he lands. He just thinks that he's still 18 or he's still 19. He thinks that he's some sort of guard, and he's not. Them things up so we can get the moving, man. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, we we put LeBron. This is this is what we. If we take LeBron James and put him in Philly with Maxi and Joel Embiid, that's what the lake. That's what we should be looking like on this side. Yeah. Just get it done, AD. Like if AD turns into the number one option, where he's like, "Yo, I'm 33 and 12." And we have D'Lo playing the way he's playing. LeBron, 20. We good. AD wouldn't even really have to average 33 points. He could average about 28. As long as his efficiency keeps it up and his defensive numbers stay up, the Lakers would be fine. But right now, him averaging 23 points, it's just not going to cut it. LeBron looks like he's not even going to average more than like 22 points for the season. LeBron James, at this point, he can only felicitate the offense. Because we Correct. still got LeBron. <laughs> but the yeah. problem is, AD is taking the backseat to LeBron, which kind of like, come on, he's 38, man. Just like, yo, get, get out the way, brother. I got this. That, look, that, that, so, so, you know, as we, as we work our way through the weeds on that, right? Like, that, I think, is, is one of the most underrated parts of it. And, the, and it's not touched on enough. Um, LeBron, LeBron thought that torch was going to be passed, right? It, it didn't, it didn't get passed. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but part of that is LeBron's fault. Not not because of anything he did, but because of the reverence that I think that like an AD has for LeBron. Can you dig what I'm saying? Like he's mm -hmm. still, you know, they're boys, but I think still kind of probably in big bro. That's big bro. And interesting enough, you know, the Lakers were rumored to get Kawhi, PG-13. All these guys said that they were interested in going to the Lakers before LeBron showed up. And as soon as LeBron showed up, None of them chose the Lakers anymore. And it's really coming down to that mentality. A lot of these guys are not going to sit around and be big bro by LeBron. And even though AD's talent is of a number one option, he does not have the leadership and the mentality of a number one option. A lot of teams fail to recognize that with some of their stars. He's not the only superstar in the NBA that has this issue. There's a number of players. We could throw James Harden into that mix also, but there's other names too. But NBA teams, a flaw that they usually have is... You know, almost correlating talent to leadership. In a lot of cases, especially in this pro player movement era, it is shown that that is not the case at all. And that's what I touch on with AD. It's not a skill set thing. It's a mentality thing. Because dudes who will take that torch and run with that shit, they don't have a big bro. Yeah, and they, fact, they are big bro. They are yeah. Debo. So they're like, yo, get the fuck out of the way, LeBron. Like, mm -hmm. sit down, motherfucker. I, I mean, they're this. Kyrie. They're Kyrie in 2017, 2018. Straight up. Straight up. And so, like, that yeah. that's the thing, right? Like, you 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 know, that's the crazy part about the the, the makeup of the individual in, in that situation might prevent him from fully saying, yo, this is this is mine. And LeBron is okay with this being mine because LeBron knows it needs to be mine. And I don't think he's at the, he, for whatever reason, he ain't on that. But to your point that it always comes with chaos though, right? If you want to, if you want to, there's, there's no passing, no torches. The torches get taken. They don't get passed. Like the same with, uh, like you had that with Kyrie a few years ago and you had that with Kobe, with Kobe and Shaq, where he's like, nah, man, this is my team. I want to, I want this right here. And it causes friction. Kobe was willing to fight Shaq physically to take the team over so it definitely does come down to the mentality guys who want it they're gonna take it no matter what and the fact that lebron james is 39 years old he's breaking down in the court and everyone's still questioning when is ad gonna take it he's never gonna take it see a world where you just pass batons like it, even like in san antonio Kawhi, they couldn't they it had trouble doing that you know like it's hard you can't pass it because it has to be earned and when you feel you earn something, you're not asking for it, right? You're not asking, even though the guy's like, 
here you go. That has to be earned. Like, it, yeah, just give it there. Yeah, like, I, I know you hold it, but let me, like, I can grab it softly, or I can just, just go ahead and give it to me. Like, that makes, like, oh, okay, you, oh, you want to be a big boy now. Yeah. All right, let's see. Right? And I don't think that's where they are. Even no matter how many conversations you have, um, that's not something that can be talked about. Like, like nobody realized when I was in Golden State, the last four or five minutes, I was the guy taking all the shots. I was the, the fourth, fifth option on the team. The last five minutes, I'm the number one option. There was no conversation. This is what I'm going to do, right? If you can do it better than me, ask for the ball at the end. And then I had to prove points where I wouldn't shoot the whole game. Now we down. Now, hey, GA, you going to shoot? Ah, yep, there we go. That's all I want. <laughs> you gonna shoot? We need you. There we go. That's all you had to say, right? So, <laughs> right, and from there, so when you know I left, and then uh, Antoine came back, there was no conversation on who was the number one option, right? There was mm -hmm. none. Mm -hmm. You know, he just won six man of the year. He's the max player. He's coming here. There's no conversation. We already know. It's already been established two years prior when we was at Golden State together. I think you're both right, but I don't think LeBron fights him for it. Can you dig what I'm saying? Like Shaq wasn't ready to. LeBron understands in a way that 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 I mean because he's one of the greatest of all time and he's played longer than like he he understands his time. So I don't think he fights him for it. But to to the point you all made, AD got to take the shit. Like LeBron's got to see you want the motherfucker before he says yeah. I'll give it to you. I believe LeBron James wants AD to take it, but he's not ready to take it. And once again, like I said before, there's business ties with AD. He's one of the biggest clients in clutch sports. So I don't think LeBron James wants to ruffle the feathers too much at this point. And he's at the tail end of his career. He's at the glory point, pretty much. He's trying to make himself into a big star. Championships is not really the main goal here, but it's LeBron James. I mean, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't mind getting another championship. But at this point, the business of LeBron James seems to be the bigger, the bigger goal here in Los Angeles as we've seen it play out with him and his production company and just his name overall just being around the bigger media sphere outside of the NBA. And he's trying to give it to him without even seeing you want the motherfucker. He's, just, he's like, here. He's like, please take it. <laughs> even with Kyrie. Like, look, I don't think people understand how, like, smart LeBron is. Like, he understands what he can do and what others can do. Like, there was no fight over the ball with Kyrie. He understood, hey, I'm going to do my thing first three quarters. Kyrie. It was here. a game in San Antonio, like, their first year together. You remember that, Gil? I don't know. There was a game where they went to San Antonio. and Kyrie and had, like, Kyrie a 50 won the ball. game. Damn near won the game by himself. It was like a double over. That was the time where – that was the give me that fucking baton game. I was like, no, this is it's mine. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, Kyrie completely took over that game. He dropped, like, 62 points. You didn't even notice LeBron was even in that game. That's because Kyrie wanted it. <laughs> That's the difference. He understood what his talent is. Oh, use a finisher. Here you go. And that's how they played the game. And that's what made them so successful. Interesting enough, when Raja said LeBron James is very smart, very calculated. And I wouldn't be shocked with this him just selecting AD to be on the Lakers. Not only it paid off with clutch sports, him just signing big contracts while being part of that agency was part of the package. Also, AD is a follower. So at the end of the day, LeBron James, he was going to have an easier point of access to gain his points and pass Kareem to being the number one scorer in the league so AD kind of played a back seat to that I don't know too many guys on AD's talent level that would have took a back seat to that but LeBron James is that calculated he is that calculated but at the end of the day going back to Gilbert Arenas's initial point of the Lakers front office just entering this season with a 39 year old LeBron James thinking that they're gonna put kind of role players like D'Angelo Russell who's up and down newcomers like Austin Reeves Hachimura Turinian Prince and a guy with a questionable motor like Christian Wood around LeBron James and Anthony Davis and think it's good enough to compete for a championship that old model used to work with LeBron James in his prime years or his later prime years but unfortunately LeBron James where he's at today and just all the mileage on his legs that plan is not going to work and it's clearly showing to start off this season. And we're only in the beginning. But the Lakers right now, their continuity, they do not look like a championship team. So we'll see if Rob Palenka does any shakeup at the trade deadline. 
And we'll also see if the Lakers have enough courage to trade Anthony Davis, possibly. Because so far in the five years that he's played for the Lakers, he played 62 games his first season. Then he played 36 games his second season, then 40, then 54. So his health was already up and down, but yet they still gave him that nice extension. Once again, business ties to LeBron James's clutch sports. I'm wondering if that's coming into play, but sometimes it takes courage to make these type of trades in order for the team to benefit and get up to the next level. We've seen Boston make this tough decision trade in Marcus Smart, which now they're going to be elevated to go to the next level fully while Jason Tatum and Brown have their prime years on that. And we've seen the same scenario play out for the Toronto Raptors when they traded away DeMar DeRozan, which is a beloved member of that team. When they traded him away for Kawhi, they were able to take a step up to the next level. Teams from time to time are going to have to make these tough decisions by trading a beloved member, which I would say AD is not really a beloved member of the Lakers. He's just sort of, he's sort of tied in business-wise with the Lakers. He's tied in with LeBron's business, which affects LeBron, which then again affects the Lakers. Once again, we'll see how this plays out the trade deadline. I expect the Lakers to be at least trying to make some move because so far the continuity with this team is just not it.